another interesting episode of Tech Talk with Apo. Today I have my friend Kester. Some call him the conservative Kester. I like to call him the Rasta Kester because of his dreads. Uh, people have asked after you, where is Kester? Where is that your Rastafarian friend? So today we're live with Kester. Can we give Kester some round of applause? Thank you. As usual on Tech Talk with Apo, we have conversations around technology. We bring to you innovation things that we believe will be of interest to you life-changing innovation that will make a difference in our life and that's what i mean our conversation would always be about with tech talk with our folks kessa we have quite a number of interesting conversations today yes. kessa to Thank let the car out of the bag no not quite but i will give a little hint there is a whole list of things we have to share today concerning technology and information in fact you will get to dive into watching this video of what these guys have been doing and the impact and how we can relate it to Nigeria as the case is. So it's going to be fun. It's going to be an interesting ride. Just stick with us. So let's drop the first one, okay? Um, we are having a conversation around a solution called WaterGen Genius. Mm -hmm. WaterGen Genius, it's, I think that's the name. The name of the company is WaterGen Genius, right? But the solution itself is WaterGen. Right, which I believe they have patent for. For we science students, we all understand that water is a combination of hydrogen and oxygen. And this is abundantly available in the earth. And now what these guys are doing is actually they created a generator that manufactures water from air. And that's uh, for me, this is exceptional, particularly because of the problem we have with water, not just in Nigeria, it will interest to know that even in so many developed country water is still a major challenge you know i know how california goes conservative with their water they sometimes would have to ship water from one part of california to another simply because of the scarcity the drought in that area so you can imagine the difference a solution like this would make but before we say too much let's drop this video let's see what this technology is about and we can have our conversation afterwards water humanity's greatest need and one of the world's biggest challenges. Freshwater resources remain scarce, and over 780 million people lack access to clean drinking water. WaterGen's patented technology taps into our planet's most abundant source of water, the air, and transforms it into a rich and renewable source of fresh drinking water. Air is drawn into the WaterGen Atmospheric Water Generator. The air filter removes dust and dirt, Clean air is then directed through WaterGen's innovative Genius technology and undergoes a heat exchange and cooling process. This brings the air to its dew point, the temperature where condensation occurs, and water is created. The water then gets channeled through a multi-stage cascade of filters. The water is now ready for drinking and is stored in a built-in reservoir, where it is continuously circulated to keep it fresh. Low in energy consumption, Genius generates five times more water per kilowatt hour than any other technology on the market and can be operated by generators or solar panels. WaterGen's atmospheric water generators produce from 600 to 5,000 liters of water per day. WaterGen is the solution. Water is now a renewable resource which can be created and continuously generated whenever and wherever it is needed. Water Gen. Taste the future. Wow, Kesta. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. Okay, so let's break it down, right? You're getting, you have this generator which can be powered by all, I mean, source of um, um, electricity, right? It could be solar, it could be generator, it could be whatever means of um, power, okay? And basically what this generator does is to by fun air, the same air we have. It goes through this process of chemical integration, separation. There's something they also call mineralization or something. There's also the biological side of it, filtration that goes in the entire process. And the, I mean, it also would obviously sort the particles it eat and you now have this final product. And what I still find interesting is the claim that this generator can generate as much as 2,000 liters 
liters of water per day. That's, that's incredible. 2,000 liters of water. <laughs> it is indeed incredible. If you look at it in the context of Lagos as big as Lagos is, Lagos, if it was an economy on its own, is probably the fourth largest economy in Africa. Our fact is I'm still the way it is. So if in Lagos we, all, we still don't have water running in all homes, um, the current arrangement we have, the way we generate water for most homes in, in Lagos, I mean, you have your borehole in your house, almost everybody is a water work company on their own. This has a major implication on the environment. I remember I said, Kesta is my conservative guy who is always, you know, bothered about the effect on humanity and the effect on environment. So, a borehole, you have, I still remember very well on Lagos Island where I grew up, almost every 100 meters there is always one borehole. Mm. The borehole is going to, going to the same water table. And that's when we have instances of, you have a borehole that has been producing water for a while and after a while, it's not producing it's water. Simply producing. because yeah. you've dug, you know, several holes and you kind of dried up the water level in that particular area. So you can see how exceptional this technology is. Meaning you don't even need to tamper so much with the environment. The environment. It's simply trying to use what you already have in abundance. Kessler, honestly, honestly this is this is one of those solutions that we have that is actually for the environment because on one hand, it caters to the issue you know, we have of, you know, water and all of that. It how scarce it tends to be. You just mentioned in some areas over there how there are issues around, you know, water and its flow. And at the same time, it is done in such a way that it's safe. It's safe for the environment. I think this is a solution that the government, like, for example, the Nigerian government, should consider taking up, like, local government by local. Honestly, it's... I checked the price of this particular um, stuff because I, I was really curious. And I saw that as of 2022, it it sells for about twenty-six thousand dollars. Looking at what we have today, you know, you know, in terms of the exchange rate and all, on the high side. But then again, Tesla is, is dead on arrival. Twenty-six thousand mm. dollars is dead on arrival. Now I understand why this thing has really not gone so commercial. I mean, how much is it to be a borehole? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so when we came on air, I was telling you about you know, this my borehole project that I was involved with. I, during COVID, I was trying to look for somehow, some a project I can also, I was trying to think of what I can do as my own intervention for, you know, the effect of COVID on my community, right? Yeah. You know, and I identified three locations around the mm -hmm. um where I felt water was a major issue. So if my own intervention was to take three different projects, three different boreholes at strategic places in a program. So that gave me an idea idea of what the cost of a borehole is. Get that up till tomorrow, a functional borehole would not cost you more than max $2,000. Max. $2,000 to $26,000. The gap is something else. Yeah. I mean, one yeah. of the reasons why electric car is still, still not so prevalent, I'm using that as an example, but it still doesn't take away the importance of water. Like this project I was talking to you about, something interesting happened that I'd like to share. So, in one of the projects, we were what all you have to dig and dig and dig until you get to the water level, right? The second one we were digging, we dug for four days and this bottle will not produce water, right? And I think it was on the fourth day, three women walked past the project because I had a supervisor, my, it's actually my cousin that was <laughs> providing the project for me. Yeah. Three women walked, they walked past the project and said in a, a local diet, when bear with me. <laughs> <laughs> Are you for real? Like these women, you know, traditional women. The interesting part of it is that water is for that community. And what they were simply saying was, you guys are digging water without coming to see your nice. <laughs> You can dig for, as long, <laughs> dig for as long as you want, water will not come out. Yes, sir, water did not come out. <laughs> anyway, so fast forward the story, I asked my cousin to have a conversation with them that what exactly do we need to do? So they gave us a list of things that we need to buy. We bought and supplied. 
and we also had to add 35,000 naira to it. This is the same water that we still benefit the same. Hold on, hold on, let me finish that. We gave them money and all those stuff by 12 o'clock. That ball will produce water before 6 p.m. Anyway, African magic in action. But my point is, the need for water is not in doubt. But again, I want us to also look at it. Can we really say that this is safe for environment as we we assume? Can we? I mean, is it from, necessarily safe for environment? Yes, I, I think so. Because from what I've watched and the few things I've read online about this particular solution, it's particular about being safe. It simply extracts, you know, except for some reason, there are some other elements that we have not gotten to see yet that, oh, it has a negative effect to the environment. You mentioned something about borehole, the cost of getting a borehole done from start to finish and all that. And this, of course, would also involve you know, pumping machine and some certain things. And when being in a in a flat, for example, in a, in a Lagos flat, for example, I would, <laughs> right? That's so it. that is on one hand is there. While this solution we are looking at right now, yes, 26. I think it's even 25,000, nine something, just approximately 26,000. If it's something that is available, you just measure. I think 2,000 liters per day. If it's something that is provided in a community or yeah, a community and the government funds this for it to for people to be able to have access to drinking water if you go to some areas you will see queues of people like trying to fetch water trying to get this is a real problem right for, and it's not really elevated so i think this is something that could, the government could be looking to maybe we could have a more cheaper you know solution on our end using the same technology for, for example we we'll be interested in what our viewers have, will have to say about this please go into the comment section let's have your thoughts about this position what are your things what are your thoughts around this what do you think let's know um, let's hear from you go to the comment section share as much as you can i would love to hear from you but three things quickly that i would like to um, wrap up with around this solution which i think are some interesting concerns number one of course would be this solution obviously would depend on the humidity of the area right so would that be a, a major factor, right? How humid an area is, you know, to determine the volume of water that can be generated. That's number one. But number two is if it's generating 2,000 liters of water, trust me, 2,000 liters is probably not inadequate for a typical housing and complex here in Nigeria, right? You know, so how many of that will you require to generate water in abundance? That would also be some interesting things I would want to know. The third one, of course, is the process of generating doing this separation obviously requires some power consumption so if you're talking about power consumption you you want to power this according to your power requirement that obviously has an impact and nigeria you understand we all understand how scarce power can be exactly you understand so if you need another bigger generator power this water gen you can already process the effect of this on the environment anyways our own bit is to bring to you solutions that we find interesting your bit is to make your judgments about it and give us feedback about this solution. Thank you guys. See you, see you next time. Don't forget to subscribe, comment, share, and like.